guest is the creator of the wildly popular website Stuff White People Like. His new book is a New York Times bestseller called Stuff White People Like, The Definitive Guide to the Unique Taste of Millions. Please welcome Christian Lander. Uh, Christian, uh, this thing has been a phenomenal success uh, for you. It started out as this website. How did, how did you get this idea in the first place? So in January of this year, right. my friend Miles Valentine and I were having an instant messenger conversation about the TV show The Wire. Mm -hmm. We're both huge fans of the show. And Miles, who's Filipino, said he didn't trust any white person who didn't watch The Wire. Really? Yeah. That's an odd statement to make, yeah. Miles is an odd guy. Yeah. And then we started trying to figure out, well, what are they doing instead of watching The Wire? And we came up with things like, um, therapy, going to yoga, right. getting divorced, right, and right. I thought, this is a hilarious concept, time to start writing, and just started writing, and the thing grew unexpectedly. Uh, there have been like 40 million hits yeah. on, the, on the website, which is astronomical. Uh, it's almost half our audience every night. This is... Uh... <laughs> it's more than the population of Canada. <laughs> yeah. Is lying one of the things that <laughs> white people like? Uh, Okay, uh, there's a quiz in here, how to calculate just how white you are. Mm -hmm. I took the quiz, I came in at 125%, which is pretty hard to do. That's very uh, impressive. Well, first of all, red hair makes the list yes. of things that white people like. Yes. Is that really... <laughs> I will remove you from this room. I wish, we, I, wish I had a bailiff here. It was only here with Jerry O'Connell's on the show. Well, yeah, white people like it, but what's really interesting is... It, it's not an even division between men and women. Right. So women with red hair sort of get this benefit of having this rare hair color that's seen as beautiful. Yeah. Whereas men with red hair are often tormented and have a very difficult childhood. <laughs> yes. uh, and more often than Please not... Please lecture me more on this. I know nothing about it. <laughs> and, of course... It's the only reason we're in comedy. Yeah. For those people who can't relate... It usually means that some child has made up a horrible rhyme about the color of your uh, pubic hair. Yes, yes, that happened too. It was actually both of my brothers. Uh, <laughs> you have tips on how to befriend a white person. Yes. This, to, to tell us about this. The entire book has a number of tips that will really help people who need to befriend white people because they're an underexploited resource for things like trips to the airport, getting them to help you paint your house or help you move. Uh -huh. But the easiest, fastest way to do it, so you only have about 15 minutes, right. ask them about their bad memories of high school. Really? And, and then what? Then all of a sudden what will happen is they'll start talking about it. And they'll feel a strong connection with you. So, did you have any bad memories? Yeah, that's school? all I had. I have, I, mean, I, I have two good memories of high school. <laughs> when someone wasn't beating me. Uh, so, that, that, that's, so that helps. And then you bond with them and then they'll do your bidding. Absolutely. Done. W okay, uh, Tim is here. Let's, let's talk about this. What do white people, what kind of clothes do white people like? I'm going to apologize for some of these because they're not very fashionable. But t-shirts is on the list. Yes. It's very important. Uh, there's three kinds of t-shirts. I said there's vintage, American apparel, and unacceptable. Right. <laughs> are the only three kinds. They love unacceptable uh, t-shirts. No, they yeah. dislike unacceptable. They dislike unacceptable. Th those okay. are the wrong ones. American apparel is acceptable, and vintage t-shirts are especially acceptable. Okay. Uh, sweaters, prime example here. Cardigans especially. Yeah. Um, I think that's all I had for fashion on there. Oh, glasses right. as well. Nice Which you done, definitely Tim. agree with. Both of you, I'm yeah. Uh, you, you, white people, you say, like being the only one in an eth ethnic restaurant. Yes, being the only white person around is something they absolutely adore. So, <laughs> <laughs> so this, 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 this comes from my own life. So I, gr I grew up in Chinatown in Toronto. Mm -hmm. And, all right, we have, we have people from Australia here. Yeah. Um, <laughs> And so I'd go into a restaurant, Chinese restaurant, and I'd see, you know, 50 Chinese people and one white guy. And I would think, great, this restaurant's ruined for me. I can't come here anymore. It's not authentic enough. Right, right. You only be the only person yes. there. Okay. Uh, <laughs> you say white people, uh, well, the best place to meet white people, uh, to find them in their natural habitat, where, where would that be? Farmer's markets. Farmer's markets? Without a doubt. <laughs> <laughs> what do you think it is about a farmer's market that oh, attracts this? It combines so many things. Yeah. One, you're outside, right. and white people cannot get enough of being outside. <laughs> That's why they wear shorts on the first warm day of the year. Yes. All right, they want to maximize their outdoor experiences. You can bring a dog to a farmer's market, mm -hmm. and dogs are on the list. Yes. And you can purchase organic food. It's like everything white people dream of in one, one solid outdoor space. You say uh, white people stand still at concerts. Yes. And you're more, other people have noticed this kind of thing before, but you're very specific about why this is happening. Yes. Well, the, the main reason is that the type of music white people listen to, indie music, doesn't really lend itself so well to dancing. Right. And in the rare situations where they do go to a concert where they could dance, they'll stand perfectly still because dancing is going to draw attention to yourself 
and will draw other white people to judge you. Right. And so the only move that's acceptable is sort of this. Right, right. The, the, one the, finger. One finger up in the air. Pointing at the stage a little bit. Right, and doing that. <laughs> that's what I see a lot of, yeah. That's it? Yeah. It's the only one that's allowed. Does that finger ever drift down to the, to the nipple? <laughs> for a gyrating, has that ever happened, do you think? Oh, Jerry's concerts. Jerry's concerts, yeah. <laughs> Uh, how are you uh, dealing with your newfound fame? Because this has been dramatic. This happened very quickly, and uh, now you must be getting a lot of attention. Yeah, it's, I, I still can't believe it. I mean, I started this thing as a, as a joke with a friend of mine in January, and I, I never expected to have a book or be on this show or right. have any of this stuff happen, so I still can't. I still can't even believe that it's actually happening. Right, but you're keeping it in perspective. You haven't bought, like, a gold Mercedes yet or anything like that. <laughs> I'm Internet famous, and Internet fame has the shelf life of a banana. So... <laughs> <laughs> Actual banana, like set a banana yeah. out, and yeah. when that banana yeah. starts to turn brown. <laughs> the banana will be edible, you know, before I'm relevant. Yeah, yeah, all right. <laughs> Wait, that's backwards. Sorry, after uh, I'm relevant. So white people love to confuse things. Uh, <laughs> uh, that's how we stay. St yes, uh, Stuff White People Like, The Definitive Guide to the Unique Taste of Millions. It's a very funny book. It's in stores now. Christian Lander, great job. Thank, Thank you. Thank you. That is our show. I do want to thank all our guests. Christian Lander, thank you so much for being thank here. You, our thanks to Tim Gunn for showing us the way. Our thanks to Jerry O'Connell. And of course, Max Weinberg and the Max Weinberg 17th. But that's called Cardinator